Hello, and welcome to Harbor Town Online. I'm Jake. I'm so glad you could join us this week. We're gonna spend some time worshiping God and learning from the Bible, and we'll have some fun too. Today, we're continuing our Summer of Love by talking about feeding the hungry. Have you ever said, I'm starving? I know I have, but I wasn't really starving. I was just hungry. But you know, there are people around the world, and even people living close to us, who don't have enough to eat. That's really sad, but what can you do about it? Well, today we're going to hear what Jesus did when he met a huge crowd of hungry people. And maybe that will give us an idea about what Jesus wants us to do. I bet you may already have some great ideas. So let's get started. I can't wait to learn more about how we can help people who are hungry. But before we do that, let's stand up and sing a couple songs to thank the one who gives us everything we need. God will always provide for us, and for that, he deserves our praise. So let's do that right now. Shout it out. I'll shine for you. 
Let's sing, I won't give up. No, I won't give up. Even when it's tough, I'm gonna shine my light for you. Yes, I will do good and I will be kind. I'm gonna shine my light for you. Let me hear you sing. No, I won't give up. Even when it's tough, I'm gonna shine my light for you. Yes, I will do good and I will be kind. I'm gonna shine my light for you. I'll shine for you. Shout out for you. Hey, Marquita, what you doing? Max, my name is Megan. Oh, yeah, sorry. I confused you with somebody else. So, what you doing? Uh, I've got a problem. Maybe you could help. You're asking for help from somebody whose head is filled with cotton? You must be desperate. Well, not quite, but I'm getting there. So, what's the problem? I've got a big group of people coming over to my house and I don't know what to do about feeding all of them. Ah, that's easy. Just do what I did when I had my 74,000 twin brothers come over. You have 74,000 twin brothers? Yeah, there would be more, but the puppet factory, they ran out of the yarn for my hair. <laughs> so what did you do when they all came over? Nothing. They didn't eat. You know why? Because they're puppets? No, because they were already stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? The stuff, you know, like the stuff. Yeah, I get it. It's just, it's not very helpful or very funny. All right, give me a few minutes. Yeah, maybe I can think of something. All right, well, while you're thinking, let's hear today's story. Actually, it's about a time when Jesus had to deal with a lot of hungry people. So let's all watch and maybe we'll get some ideas. Stories of the Bible. Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. The crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Hey, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. Bye, everyone. Sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. Here you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. You got it. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. Okay, Marsha, I got it. You mean Megan, not Marsha. Yeah, yeah, uh, close enough. Anyway, you ever hear that phrase, what would Jesus do? Sure, why? That's the answer. Just do what Jesus did. Max, I can't do miracles like Jesus. I can't turn a couple of fish and loaves of bread into enough to feed everybody that's coming over. Eh, so much for that idea. Besides, some of the people might be allergic to seafood or gluten or something. 
Hmm. Let me think. Okay, I got a backup plan. Great, I'm all ears. You've got a pantry here at church that's got a bunch of food, right? Yeah, but I can't take food from there for my events. That food is for people who need it. I know what it's for, but I got a question for you. Do you get one person to fill up the food pantry each month? Well, no. It would be almost impossible for one person to buy all that food. We get everybody to help out. My point exactly. Why don't you have everybody bring something to share? I mean, you could chip in a little extra since you're the host, but it would be much easier for you. That's a great idea, Max. A potluck. Yeah, depending on who's cooking, it could be bad luck, too. Like all tuna casseroles, but that's another issue. That would work perfectly, especially since most of the people are from church. Uh, church people like tuna casserole? No, having everyone bring something reinforces the idea of sharing what we have with others. And that's one of the themes from our Summer of Love, Feed the Hungry. Ah, oh, no. I forgot this is the Summer of Love. I should have worn my tie-dye t-shirt. This is a different kind of Summer of Love, Max. We're trying to show Jesus' love to everyone around us by helping with things that, like food and clothing and other basic needs. You might not be able to feed thousands of people like Jesus did in today's lesson, but you can certainly help out. Find some extra food or some clothes that don't fit anymore and bring them to church to help someone in need. God promised that if we trust Him, He will supply our needs. But sometimes He uses His church to do that. So this week, try to find some ways to share God's love with others. Do you have a favorite meal? Maybe it's a particular kind of food like pizza or tacos. Or maybe it's when you get together with family and friends to celebrate a holiday or a birthday. Meals can be special and memorable times. Each week we celebrate a very special meal called communion. It's different because the purpose isn't to eat, but to remember what Jesus did for us. In fact, Jesus started communion himself. He met with his closest friends and prayed over the bread. He told them that the bread stood for his body, which would be broken on the cross. Then he told his friends that the juice stood for his blood, which would be spilled out for the forgiveness of sins. When you take communion, you're actually sharing a meal with Christians all over the world. It's like a giant gathering of God's family, and that makes it really special.
to do something special for Jesus, like give him a meal or a new pair of sandals. Even though he's not on earth right now, you can still do that. How? We'll just listen to our memory verse. It's something Jesus told his followers in the book of Matthew. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. So when you do something for other people, you're also doing it for Jesus. Now let's say that all together. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. Okay, one more time. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. Think about that verse this week. And if you want to do something for Jesus, it's easy. Just do something for somebody else. Sometimes we see somebody in need and say, what can I do? The boy in today's story probably didn't think sharing his meal would be much help with all those people. But Jesus used it to feed thousands of people. So if you ever think that you can't do anything to help, remember that little boy. Jesus can use whatever we give to build his kingdom. So remember, it's not how much you give, but it's how you give it that's important. Let's close our time together with prayer. Dear God, thank you for the way you care for every one of us, for our food each day, the clothes we wear, and everything else that you give us. Help us to share our blessings with other people in need and to show your love to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Next week, invite a friend to watch Harbortown online with you. And one last thing, pause the screen when you see the discussion questions and talk about them with the people around you. See you next time.